Last week, Indian Railways celebrated its 160th anniversary. It is the world's second biggest employer, and it has over 75,000 kilometers of track stretching across this vast land. Of course, for Indians, it's a fundamental part of their transport system. But also for the modern international traveler, it can form a fundamental part of your journey. At Wild Frontiers, we get asked time and time again, so what are the trains like? How comfortable are they? What do the bunks look like? Of course, that's quite hard to explain over the telephone. So what I thought I'd do in this short film is not tell you, but show you exactly what the trains are like. So first of all, this is what's known as first AC chair car. This is the kind of uh, service that you'll get if you're going on short train journeys in India, say between Delhi and Agra, or Delhi and Rishikesh. Uh, short journeys of up to about four or five hours, something like that. As you can see, it's very comfortable. The seats are reclining, you get mineral water, you'll get breakfast if you're brave enough to eat it. Um, but yeah, it's a good service, easy, comfortable. So this is first AC. Now the problem with this is they usually only have one carriage on the train and it only has sleeps 12 people, which means it's hard to get for groups. But for tailor-maids, this is what we try to use. Two bunks in behind a sealed door. The second one that we mainly use for our groups is called two-tier AC. And this is what you get when you sleep during the day. The back goes up in the evening you put it down and sleep on that. What you also get at the end of the carriage or the corridor is two more berths which go down to make two beds and again goes up as a chair for the day's journey. And each of the little berths is separated by a curtain which can be drawn across to give you some privacy. Okay, so this is three tier AC. Now what you can see here are the three bunks, or rather one bunk with three berths in it, both sides, and during the day this gets pushed down, but at night it gets pulled up and makes the third berth of the bunk. This is three tier AC, so that means there are six people in each of these, with two more at the far end. Here are two gentlemen illustrating that, and there's the uh, biscuit waller. Um, so they are as comfortable as the two tier, they're just a bit more crowded, that's all. There's no curtain, no door, they're open. So another thing to say is that each person in this class gets a blanket, oh, and a pillow, just like this chap is bringing down now, which he hands out to everyone. Um, they're actually incredibly clean and uh, very uh, okay to use. You don't really need to bring a sleeping bag or anything, they're perfectly okay. You also have a constant flow of um, refreshment wallers. This guy's selling samosas, but you'll also have chai wallers, and water wallers, and sandwich wallers, and crisp wallers, and every waller you can think of. To be honest, three-tier AC does get quite crowded, and we try to avoid it. It's only when there's spillover that we do end up using it. Most of the time, we try to go for two-tier AC, which is much less crowded and much more comfortable. There are a couple of things to mention about traveling on the trains in India. The first thing, of course, is the security. Just like anywhere in the world, you do need to take care, particularly of your important possessions like your passport, your wallet, etc. Actually, the security on the trains is pretty good in India, and it's very unusual that people get things stolen. But just like anywhere, you need to take a little bit of care. The second thing to mention is that Indian railways only allow you to book seats on trains 90 days prior to departure. So this means you need to have your travel plans in place as early as possible as trains, particularly the first and second classes, can get booked up very quickly. And of course, if you are booking later on, it's all done on a rather random computer system, which means that you may not get berths together if you're traveling with friends or in a group. Of course, at Wild Frontiers, we manage this situation as best we can and make sure that everybody stays within the same compartment. But the sooner you can get your travel plans together, the better. But overall, traveling on the trains in India is not only a convenient, cost-effective and comfortable way to travel, it also opens up India to you. If you're the type of person that likes to travel beneath the surface to see the real country, to see how real people live, then train travel in India is a quintessential part 
of your travel experience.